So this is our 385 project, EC385. Uh, it is Digital Systems Laboratory. Um, and for our final project, we implemented a synthesizer using an FPGA board. So for our final project, we decided that what we wanted to combine was the synthesis of audio signals alongside VGA output so that we can show some kind of user display. Because if we communicate clearly to the person who will be using this, then they'll be able to perform whatever functions that it's supposed to be performing correctly. So how we implemented the actual audio synthesis is we had a table of 256 values uh, that actually are digital values that um, represent a single period of a waveform. And so as you can see up here, we uh, have five different waveforms. We have a sine wave, a square wave, a saw wave, an organ wave, and then this uh, function that we actually generated a wave that kind of sounds like a square and a sine wave combined together. And so we actually take those 256 um, digital values and using a chip on the FPGA board, we actually, uh, it converts it to an analog signal that we can output to, uh, to our speakers. So an example of us trying to play this would, you know, so obviously you can see right here that these keys are mapped out to keys on the keyboard. It's hard to play. So you can see the keys work. Now, an interesting feature is we can actually play two keys at a time. So if I were to then press A and D down, you can see that it forms a nice distance here. And now another thing we wanted to implement was multiple octaves. And so one thing that is just um, a feature of, of tones that you hear is to go up an octave, you actually just double the frequency. So that's really convenient when we're working with digital values because that's just a bit shift. So if we shift all the bits to the left, then it'll double the frequency, which will go up an octave. So we can use our buttons on our, our board over here to actually increase the octave. So you can see that we still have all of the uh, functionality at multiple different octaves now. So now, if we want to change the values of what kind of sine or cosine or other kind of waveform we want to do, as previously demonstrated, we change it. So sine will sound like this, square wave. Now, my personal favorite is the organ wave. and. Uh, Alec and I actually spent quite a long time trying to figure out how to make this work. So what we did was we, we came up with an equation. I think it was... It was sine of x minus sine of 2x minus sine of 3x minus sine of 4x. And this is what the wave looks like. And we thought that this would sound cool if nothing else. And so we spent probably about two hours manually going through 256 different values of one period of this wave and converting them into digital values. And the resolution is 10 to the, or 2 to the 14th, so that's a lot of values. Uh, so there's a lot of precision in the actual tone. And we had to convert it into the values and then into hexadecimal, and then actually put it into a table, a lookup table on, on the FPGA memory. We used on-chip memory for this. So now, uh, just another few notes about the graphical user interface. So, in order to make it easier for the person to, yeah, okay, there we go. So, the display is a current octave, and we, again, as Alex had explained, that we use these buttons to switch the octave. It's, it's useful to know which octave you're, you're going to be playing in, so that, you know, if I were to, example, play a song that needs to require two octaves to play, one could switch back and forth between octaves to hit the notes, because only one octave is able to be played at a time. So, I mean, I, I, I mean, there's definitely examples of that. Just a little, little end note right there. And uh, do you just want to demo some, some songs now? Yeah, we'll just, we'll just play some, uh, just show the different features of it. So I like listening to the lower octaves personally, um, and let's do a let's do a sine wave. So it's a really mellow tone.
and now by far, um, I think everybody will agree, our most abrasive tone that gets annoying actually to listen to after a little while is the square wave, but that's your typical uh, you know, Game Boy sound and, and your uh, old school video game sound. Um, and then we also implemented a, a saw wave. Um, so we actually implemented two different saw waves. We implemented one with a negative slope and one with a positive slope to see if they would sound any different. And they pretty much sounded the same, so we just decided to keep one of them in here. We could easily switch to the other one, but um, they, they, were kind of, they made the same sound, so we didn't think it was necessary to make both of them uh, part of the project. I think uh, a good way to end this video is uh, on any other notes that you might have. Is there any notes you have? No, I think all we right. covered it all. All right, let's play one more song. Why not? <laughs> and and so, well, 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 we're not we're not musicians at heart. You know, we're we're engineers and musicians on the side. And we can also get some rock and roll going. And I think. <laughs> All right.